Did you know that the elusive Hawking radiation theorized by Stephen Hawking has never been seen? Until now, scientists have recreated a DIY black hole on Earth, and the results are astounding. Join us as we unravel the secrets of this cosmic phenomenon. Look at this funky orange donut. It's one of the few photos of a black hole that we humans possess. The first version of this image was released in 2019, and it took scientists some time to tweak it so it looks a bit sharper. Now, it has a dark center and an orange rim. We don't exactly know what black holes look like. They're something we can't directly observe, but we can infer their presence and study them. Sort of. Black holes are like the ultimate vacuum cleaners of the universe, and even if someone ventured into the great unknown to study them, we would never know the result. The scientists just wouldn't make it back. People have long believed that the only thing black holes can do is to devour. But back in 1974, Stephen Hawking said that black holes aren't just empty voids sucking up everything in their path. Black holes can shoot out some light of their own. This phenomenon was later named Hawking radiation. But nobody has ever actually seen this mysterious radiation in real life, so it remained a theory. It was impossible to prove it by looking through a telescope. The simplest way to see and study a black hole is to replicate it in a lab and look at it right there. You may instantly think of the Large Hadron Collider, that famous particle accelerator. Technically, if we accelerate the particles and smash them into each other, we might have a black hole in the end. Currently, the LHC is nowhere near reaching the required energy to create an actual black hole. But scientists found a different way to simulate black holes on Earth. Their goal was to understand how we see the Hawking radiation waves fall in and come out. They realized those waves are pretty slight. Plus, it's virtually impossible to see them from a real black hole. The thing is, Hawking radiation might be simply overpowered by other radiation sources. But it's impossible to avoid these complications using a domesticated man-made black hole. It may sound like they aim to create microcosmos in a lab, but of course, the replica was not intended to be the same as the original black hole. For example, the DIY black hole lacks a signature spaghettification feature. Also, while real black holes are all about light waves, scientists on Earth had to make do with sound waves. In space, nothing, not even light, can escape it if it crosses the event horizon. Things work pretty much the same with the DIY black hole, but in this case, no sonic vibrations can escape once they cross the boundary. This black hole analog was more like a tube rather than those swirling things you see in NASA pics. The scientists were just curious to see if one of those quantum entangled particles that got close to the event horizon would escape as Hawking predicted. You see, quantum entanglement means that two particles act the same, no matter where they are in time and space. Creating a black hole from scratch seems to be a pretty complicated adventure. It might seem that such an experiment needs some intricate ingredients, like California and other fancy recently discovered elements chilling at the very end of the periodic table. But the black hole the researchers created in the lab was made of rubidium gas. Rubidium gas is faster than sound itself. It's so quick that it puts a stop to any sound waves trying to break free, just like how a black hole's crazy gravity does in space. While experimenting, scientists use lasers to hold atoms in place and make them act like one big atom. With another laser beam, they made this gas flow like a waterfall, creating a sort of event horizon. Rubidium is a pretty humble element number from the periodic table. It's number 37, and you can find it between krypton and strontium. Even though rubidium is the 16th most abundant element in the Earth's crust, it's still relatively rare. You probably even saw it with your eyes. Rubidium compounds are sometimes used in fireworks to give them a red-violet color. It's classified as an alkali metal, which means it can be dissolved in water, just like instant coffee. Also, it has a relatively low melting point, just slightly higher than body temperature. Collectively, all the atoms in a DIY black hole weigh about a thousandth of a single bacterium. It's made up of about 8,000 rubidium gas atoms and is only about 0.1 millimeters long. A grain of sugar, for instance, has at least a billion of atoms. Just so you know, rubidium costs about $36 per gram. So the raw material for this DIY project didn't cost a pretty penny. 
the whole experiment was constantly recorded on camera. Because the camera can instantly destroy the analog black hole when capturing it, scientists had to keep recreating the analog entity over and over again. They did that experiment 97,000 times. That's over 124 days of non-stop work. It paid off. The photos proved that Hawking radiation always stays the same. The team had to gather a ton of data to see how these sound waves behave together. And those waves did the same thing every single time, just like Hawking said. So, this experiment proved him right. But here's the thing. Until we can figure out a way to study black holes in space using a super-advanced telescope that we can't even imagine yet, we'll have to rely on theoretical studies like Hawking's to determine if this happens in real black holes. Okay, you're not a scientist, but you still want to create a black hole replica. No problem! You're going to need some stretchy fabric. A t-shirt with lycra will do, an apple, and two ping pong balls. Make sure to invite two friends, as you won't perform it alone. Put a ping pong ball somewhere on the fabric and just watch what happens. Now, roll it across the fabric and check out how it moves. Make sure those volunteers of yours pull the fabric tight enough so there are no wrinkles or bumps. Smooth it out as much as possible. Now take that ping pong ball and place it near the edge of the fabric. Let it go and see what goes down. If you lay the fabric flat and put a ball on it, it stays put. But if you roll it across the fabric, it goes in a straight line. The fabric represents space-time. When there's no big mass on the fabric, it doesn't curve at all. That's why the ball can just chill or move straight when you roll it. It's like how light travels through space when there are no black holes around. But now, let's say you plop an apple in the middle of the fabric. That causes the fabric to curve downward. Just like a big mass, like a planet, star, or a black hole curves space-time, creating a gravity well. Now, it's almost impossible to keep the ping-pong ball still. It always rolls towards the middle, and when you try to roll it in a straight line, it follows a curved path. As long as it doesn't get too close to the middle, you could probably still roll it from one end of the fabric to the other. Kinda like how light curves when it passes near a black hole but doesn't go inside the event horizon. But if it gets too close to the center, the ball gets sucked in and can't escape, just like light can't escape if it ends up inside a black hole's event horizon. Now, if you rolled two balls at once, you might have noticed that they didn't affect each other's movement as long as they didn't crash into each other. That's because the balls don't have enough mass to make any extra curves in the fabric. All the curving is caused by the much heavier apple in the middle. This shows why we only feel Earth's gravity pulling us down and not sideways by other things like people, cars, or buildings. Their gravity is way weaker compared to Earth's.